This is how I prepare the ground for planting corn. After I use the, the fork and dig it up and make it into lumps, this is the next step. And when the bees come, I have to put on a veil to make sure that the bees don't get me. If you look, you'll see that the bees are right over there. So I have to come and do this from around half past five in the evening or even later so that the bees wouldn't come and bother me. Okay, already. I have those four beds there, one, two, three, four, to be planted um, day after tomorrow. Today is Friday, planting that Sunday. So those two beds there and these two beds here will be coming up soon. And you can see that those four beds there, the corn have already put out its tassel there and bees are on it all the time since morning and they will also help to pollinate the corn seeds i can see the white box in the middle with the little red on it have a, a little beard of bees but i wouldn't go there right now because the bees are busy bringing in some pollen and nectar and all the other goodies you can't see it from here, but the, if you look down to the end there, you will see quite a lot of activities going on, man. Bees flying in and out like crazy. So I don't think they'll bother me here too much. It might have the one or two bees that, which are the scout bees, not scout, no, the, the bees that are the, the guard bees they would come and bother me here a little um counting from left to right we have one two three four the fifth colony i saw some activities there recently a couple of days ago and when i went in to my surprise i know that that is a, a new queen but i had about eight queen cells that colony was comprised of two brood boxes they were going pretty good and i don't know what happened but i saw eight queen cells so i made two three splits two nooks and i used the the other brood box as another split you see i have it quite over on that side there so i'll need to get back in there and see how they're doing in a couple of days see if the queen hatch or whatever it is but um in addition to that there isn't much going on right here at the good honey bee yard so cello to the good honey bee yard today this evening uh this is uh what friday the 20th of march 2020 it's about 5 45 now in the evening the sun is going down very nicely and we had a very productive day of wax rendering and i'm here this evening trying to see if i can dig up this ground here um, munch it up a little more so it will be a little more fine like i said i do this you know manually by by hand really i don't use any machine because the vibration from the machine interfere with my arthritis and I got a lot of pain, so I have to do it by hand. And it's very good for the bees too. It's not so much um, stress on the bees. Although the, the legs of the, the, the bee stand 
have um, rubber, you know, the rubber that the, the, the cars and vehicles runs on. I take that rubber and I cut it into little squares enough so that I can put at the base of the, the bottom of this, this the, the, the legs actually. See like this one here. You see I have, I put some tiles to level the, the ground and then, then I have the the rubber and I have some foam which are tied together here and I put the oil, the used oil from the car engine or any engine and um, that is to prevent the ants from getting up there and every so often I will come and replenish the oil. Um, that's a new method I'm using now, seeing how that will work. And here we have one of the nooks, the splits that I made. And over here is a piece of the, the car tire that I use. Yeah, you see here, that's the car tire, just peel it off. Right, and I, I would cut it into like maybe a, a four to six inch piece and then I cut it down the side this way so I'll get the exact thing that I need to put there under the, the B stand and that is to prevent vibration because if you if you would listen to the background song we have machinery and thing taking place we have a guy my neighbor he is doing a lot of work with the that excavator and all that vibration is not affecting the bees here at all i hope you can see it now you see all the activities going on here at this hour of the day a lot of bees is going in and out bringing in their goodies i don't want to go across there at all because right now they're, they're very very active you seeing them we have to let them do what they do best and bring in all that goodies for us. Yeah, man. So I have two colonies here which are behaving not so nice. Although I try my best to get them to conform to what I would like them to do, they're just doing their own thing. From this side, which is the left side, one, two, three, the fourth co the fifth colony, one, two, three, four, yeah, the fifth colony, as well as the uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, the twelfth colony is doing their own thing. So let me get away from the these bees and the activity and let me see if I can get back over there and see if I can munch, mulch up some more of that earth in preparation for planting corn which will assist the bees greatly in uh, their pollen collection pollen gathering yes folks so you know thanks for watching and i'm trying to keep you in touch with what i'm doing here so that you know maybe you could learn from what i do and maybe you could give me some comments so that i can even improve such as what some of you guys have already done with your comments you see they've they ventilating very nice I didn't want it to have so many colonies here you know all I wanted to have here was eight colonies now I have 15 plus these three when the Queen come out and get mated so I'll have to cut back I don't want to have to handle so many bees here. It's a little problem for me. I need to be more relaxed when I'm in this bee yard. This one that I'm showing you here is the one that I caught in a swarm. And I, I have found that this, this colony, they are... Um, they have a lot of varroa. I don't know if they're encouraging varroa or what it is they're doing, but that is, that is one of the reasons why I do like to capture swarm, you know. You have so much problems to get that swarm, to, con to get them to 
be um, to conform to what you want them to conform to. So it's better to make your queens from your area rather than going and catching swarm. That is, that is what I find that is that works best for me. Catching swarm is a pain in the butt. You always have to be up on a boat doing all kind of things with them. Never a dull moment. Anyhow, I'm hoping that that swarm would at least give me some honey for my efforts and my problems, the problems that they give me. Okay, so that is what's going on today. Um, I need to get in these colonies soon to see what what kind of honey stores that they would have and, you know, set a date for extraction and all of that. Today have been very, very nice. Uh, 31 degrees Celsius. Nice hot day, man. UV index is, is, was high. So I got a lot of work done and uh, trying to keep out of the sun so that I wouldn't get a problem with my skin and uh, all that heat. And you see, that's another good reason why I have the overhead covering. This galvanized covering I have over the, the colonies here. Um, when the day is so hot and I have to go and tend to these bees, at least I would have some covering. I would have a nice shade. The bees could handle it because they have a water source and everything, which is close by. And if you notice this combination I had to do here, I had us to put an extra piece of metal on top there to get these bees to be a little more cool on the inside. Because today was so hot, um, I don't have any other method in which I could use. So I just take makeshift now, and I put it here so that gives them a little more cooling. And um, they seem to be doing good. These, these two nooks here, they, they're under the, the covering so they wouldn't be so hot. So I, I usually get a little better honey from these bees because they don't have to do so much work in gathering water to keep the colonies cool. So that's a good way of, um, a good benefit I have from, you know, doing this overhead covering. Yeah, man. So another good bees video coming to you directly from the Good honey beard. Yeah. I am Hans T. Yaman, and um, it has been a PPPP plum pleasing pleasure as well as a privilege making these little videos for you. And I hope that many of you will be able to gather some good information from it and benefit from it as well. Of course, your comments, good, bad, or indifference, will be very much appreciated. Don't forget. Like and share, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and um, ring that bell icon most of all. Okay, folks, thanks very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. TTFN, bye for now. Let me get back to that thing there, boy, because you know, in addition to trying to mash up this thing here, I'll have to um, wet these plants, and it's already getting late. You see what I also did was, um, in case I have to put on an extra shoot, you know, I have my shoot here ready. <laughs> Man, the kind of tricks you just have to pull on those bees, it's amazing. You have to be, you have to be doing like a, a magician, pulling out tricks from your, heart, from your heart all the time. So, I'm getting back to it. Let me see if I could mash up some more of this ground here. Before, before it get too dark. So hold on there.
TFN.